Uh, we'll start with the statement he put out a couple of days ago. Um, you know, I, I don't want to read word for word. I'm sure you've all seen it, but it started um, the end bit. Really, it was you know Liverpool are going to explore the range of options available, given the clear need for escalation and resolution. And it feels like that this statement has almost turned a bit of mood against Liverpool. Don't know. Like, there's been people come out and go, "Well, what do they want? What do they want?" But I suppose that is the question, really. What what do they want? What what? Because they've asked for the audio as well. I think it's important to mention yeah. that. Liverpool's response has been quite firm and heavy-handed. I think is maybe the way to put it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, what do they want? I think what they want is that this doesn't just become another another episode in a litany of ah, oh, got that wrong. Sorry. And move on. You know, I, I saw it described this week or, or over the weekend. I think it was, it might have been Martin Samuel. I might have got that wrong. Someone described it as the the biggest error, that's, officiating error that's ever been made in the Premier League. Now, okay, that's a big statement to make, but it's, it's you know, there's not many that you can think of where you go, well, actually, the only one I can think of that's sort of, on a level because it's literally a goal or not and probably even bigger is the the goal line tech failed um, Sheffield United against yeah. Aston Villa I think it was the first game after Covid lockdown yeah. and, and the, the the technology wasn't working and Sheffield United were denied the goal ended up getting relegated um, yeah. I think yeah it um, yeah that season yeah. so your, Aston Villa stayed up just because yeah, of the goal, yeah that's right Yeah, I, think, I don't think Sheffield United actually did get relegated I think Villa stayed up that was it as a result so that's the only sort of precedent you can think where it's such a a clear and obvious, and that's a that's a phrase obviously that gets used a lot with with officials and, and VAR. Such a clear and obvious error, and when a clear and obvious error like that happens, you can do one of two things: you can say, "Oh, it doesn't happen often that you know, once in a lifetime," or you can say, "Actually, well, why has that happened? What can you do about it? It's not the technology that's failing." It's not. I mean, I don't like VAR, full stop. Cards on the table, but that's VAR wasn't the problem in, in this situation. The application was, and the and the language around the, the use of VAR was yeah. the problem. So I think Liverpool's request for the audio is, is the first step, obviously, and that's that's clear. Right, what happened? Why did this decision... Why was this decision made? What can we change from it to avoid it happening again? Is it specific to these officials... Because I listened to the mic'd up um, show with Howard Webb yep. when he did with Michael Owen, yep. and I listened to the clips from that, and I can't believe for one second that if all referees spoke the way that they, the, the referees in that that program spoke, I can't believe this decision would ever happen. I can't believe there'd be four people in that room, and not one of them would say the word goal or the word onside. Or not one of them would go. Well, no, no, well, no. He's 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 flagged. Like he's it's it, this is an offside this is an offside goal we're checking. This is not an onside goal. I can't believe hearing what I have. I mean, you, there's there's a a clip of um, Newcastle against Arsenal. A penalty gets awarded for a handball. I think it's Kivio, the Arsenal player, and you can hear four different people speaking at the same time. But they're all they're all saying things like the offside. We're checking the offside phase. It's a penalty. The penalty's been awarded. The penalty's been awarded. It's a handball. It struck his hand. We know it struck his hand. So th there's all that clarity is there. Yeah. In this instance, I can't understand how there isn't someone at some point, even if it's even if it's the referee on the field, who says, "Okay, can I just check? No goal. That, that's all. It, that's all it takes in this instance." And 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 the VAR would say, "No, no goal. You know that that's that's as, as easy as it is." So that's the first thing from Liverpool. What was said. Why was it said, or why was it not said? Is that a, is that protocol? Is is that is that a problem with the protocol and the language that referees are told to use, or is that these referees, these officials, using not following protocol, or going off off message, off off the track, whatever? Um, and that that changes the guidance. Maybe it's given to the referees, or it, or it, listen, it costs these referees, you know, games, training they might have to go undergo, or you know. <laughs> in extreme circumstances he might not be good enough to referee in the Premier League beyond that I think the other thing that Liverpool are trying to do is just make sure that it doesn't get brushed it, it doesn't get because next week and listen you know it's different they're all different events and everyone will go back to every fan of every club will have their five top five well remember this one remember this one remember that one Tottenham the week before had the penalty against them against Arsenal which led to Jermaine Genus 
tweeting about well you know what he well you look at what he tweeted being warned for his conduct and being told actually you're 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 inciting um you know criticism and, and, and hatred against referees that was the week before this weekend there'll be someone else it might be Crystal Palace it might be Everton it might be Luton there will be these issues and it'll get brushed under the carpet Liverpool's statement is ensuring that we're talking about this on Tuesday and we'll be talking about it on Wednesday and we'll be talking about it when the the officials are confirmed for the weekend which you know we know they won't include a certain couple we'll be talking about it after this weekend's game it'll be remembered because it was such a grave miscommunication error and when something like that happens, really, it needs to be kept in the spotlight because people need to improve. Yeah, absolutely. And the, 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 there's this like theory what Liverpool are after and what they're not after. I suppose the, the biggest thing is the, the, there's there's a thing in place now where VAR can. If goal line technology seems to fail, go back to that Villa yeah. game. VAR can intervene. I think we've seen an example, a couple of examples where that that has happened as well. So it is almost a change of the process. The interesting one I've got here, if you don't mind, I wanted mm-hmm. this sentence was. The fact that such failings have been categorised as significant human error is also unacceptable because any and all outcomes should be established only by yeah. the review with full transparency. So basically, before any review has happened, PGMOL or whoever have already blamed, or they've already just yeah. put out. So a lip there by saying, well, how can you say that when you haven't even looked? Yeah, yeah. And if, and if, if that is the case, then that then we can we have the audio to listen to that is the case? 100%. And that's the other thing is, this, this is... Darren England and Dan Cook are at the centre of the storm, right? And and it might be, it, the review might confirm that that's that was all it was. These two aren't good enough. They might, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it might also say, do you know what? They've 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 made an error in terms of they've misheard something or they just haven't done this. But really, the 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 protocol and the language that, that the referees are supposed to use to each other lends itself to this situation happening and yeah. allows this situation to happen. So that's not a human error. You know, the human error might be you didn't spot the flag, or or you didn't you didn't triple check, double check, whatever. But the the other error might be actually, you know what? You've left you've left too many loopholes in there. You've left too much vague vagueness in the um in the in the the script that that, that referees have to follow. This check complete stuff. This sort of as a military kind of language. You know, this this no intervention time. Um. You know, even even to the stage where and I, I actually wasn't aware of this. You know, we follow Dale Johnson on 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 Twitter. Obviously, he's across all. I actually didn't know that you didn't have to. If it, if they think it's an, an obvious onside, they don't have to draw the lines and put them up. Now, I, I mean, you and I watch cricket. How many times do you see, uh, as let's say, an appeal for a catch? Let's say, and and you go, no bat involved in this. We'll just check the LBW as well, and you can see from the replay, you go, it's not this. This isn't going to be LBW. It's pitching outside leg, or it's it's you know it's bouncing over the top or whatever. But they still do it just for the just to complete the process because the process is well, we we we're here. May, we're here. We may as well check, you know. So I don't understand why that wasn't the case where they've gone. Look, he he looks a yard on sides. I think he is a yard on sides. Let's just get these lines in. And then we'll just give you that moment, and it, and in some point while you're doing that and you're doing that process, you you it just it gives you that time. Well, to it would, sort have, of get it the would have come decision. up on the screen. Yeah. Aspect. It would have came up on side, and yeah. then everyone would have went, "Oh, it's a goal." Yeah, you, yeah. You, that's when you could have twigged on that you were wrong. And here, I think yeah. the other thing that's that's been lost in amongst it. And I thought Jamie Carragher made a good point on Monday Night Football. This sort of following of protocol, and I know it's important in certain areas. You have to, you know, you have rules are in place and protocol is in place, and sometimes tough. Right, but when the game kicks off, there is not a, there's not a single world that exists where the VAR and the assistant VAR don't go, don't go immediately. Why are they taking a free kick? Why why is Luis Diaz not celebrating? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why 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 is the scoreboard still say one nil to uh, sorry nil nil? Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, uh, stop you the game. Uh, stop just what, excuse me, Simon. Stop the game. Stop the game, and he can explain. Go and go and get the two captains. Go and get the two managers and say, "Listen, this has happened. I really am sorry about this. What we're going to do is we're going to get the lines drawn up on the screen. We're going to put it on the big screen. We're going to tell the fans, sorry, it was a goal. We, we cocked up. This idea that once the game's restarted, it's like this sacred sort of law that oh, you can't stop the game now because the Spurs have took a free kick. It's like yeah, you can." You can. You might get a slap on the wrist from IFAB. They might say, Do you know what? You didn't follow protocol there. But really, the whole of the rest of the world will say, 
you know what fair play they've held their hands up they've held their hands up they've held their hands up and and, and, you know listen it wasn't the last minute of the game we don't know how it would have turned out but I tell you what it doesn't half make a difference if Liverpool go 1-0 up with 10 men in a game rather than going 1-0 down it, 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 it changes the mood of the stadium it changes the mood of Liverpool it gives them something to hang on to it means Klopp maybe doesn't make the subs that he makes it, 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 it's all these things feed into this idea and yeah it's to me and we won't know until we, we hear the audio and I know there was a, a thing Sky said last night that the, the officials or the VAR officials were away within seven seconds which still feels too long and the, the, the referee didn't find out until half time well we'll see from, from the audio Um you know, if the referee didn't find out till half time, I'm not quite sure whether that's the correct protocol either because I actually think maybe he should have been given the the chance. If they say to him straight away, Oh God, Simon, we thought you'd said offside eh, onside. We we've we've disallowed the goal there, that's stood a stood. You could have left that in the referee's hands, he might have had the chance to say, ah, do you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna take control of this. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. The requesting of the audio thing, even that seems to have caused like when Virgil van Dijk was sent off, the audio was out and about very quickly. Obviously, because yeah. he, he got an extra ban. I, I, I've seen a couple of things about, like, maybe do they want to release it? Is it going to cause a pile on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. With all due respect, that's happening anyway. Like, the fell. If anything, I think if you could hear what happened, maybe it does just to go, you know what? It, it is obviously an error. It's a, it's a bad error. They've absolutely messed it up. But it kind of gets rid of all like any theories because there yeah. are people out there who think it would have been done here like diddles yeah. and I, I don't believe that I genuinely because I know how bad I think refs are so I, I can understand there's a bit of a bit of incompetence by the way if someone's made a mistake like you, it is what it is but the fact that this has taken a long time to come out it, it is leading to like th- there's a lot of theories and conspiracy theories swearing that which could have been avoided as well yeah yeah and I think they will they will release it obviously and it'll be listen everyone's sort of waiting it's, it's like the sort of a uh, the hottest single of the, of Honestly, the autumn, it, isn't it? Yeah, it's get gonna, on Spotify yeah, get on Spotify. Some dough, yeah. It'll be right off the charts, <laughs> definitely. Um, but yeah, you're right. In the in the absence of of confirmation, what you get is the, is the speculation, isn't it? And we've seen the clips of is this the moment where Simon Hooper finds out, and it, you know, it, looks like it, does. <laughs> it does look like it, but you know, that it might not be backed up by by the audio, of course. Um, but yeah, until until we sort of see that, and I think we will. I think I think Howard Webb will will have to accede to that request. Um, we'll we'll just have to wait, but it's um like I, to be honest, when I watched that, like I said, that match officials mic'd up show, my my sort of thing was it's too it's too mu- much jargon. It's very frantic, isn't it's it? It's frantic and it's jargon. So it's in the in the in the. So of course it's a fast paced game and listen the referee's out of breath and he's do, he's doing it but this sort of oh, I'm checking APP blah 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 like really the language is too complicated it, it things need to be we're going to check whether it's a handball we're going to check whether it's offside and I can, again I go back to it it staggers me it staggers me that at no point even when he just confirms the decision so when he confirms when he says check complete I can't believe that he says check complete that's it goal stands or doesn't or, or or he's onside or he's offside I can't believe that there isn't that sort of just final finality it's like in the cricket isn't it you, you can you can stick with your original decision or, or they say oh yeah he's out yeah or, or, or um, it's a clean catch or it's it's uh, you know what whatever it is you know um, impact in line wickets hitting you know that, that those things are said Andy which can't confirm the scene I can't believe that he would just say yeah that's all sound that mate like you know, that that basically is what they're saying he, he's done, or what 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 we were told that he's done. It just if that's the only thing that comes out of it, that listen, we have this sort of finality of if it was onside, check complete, stand. you may award the goal. That's all you got to say. Yeah, yeah. Check complete, that is no goal. Yeah. yeah, the fact that they don't end that that could be something that comes out. Yeah, this, I suppose, yeah absolutely. In which case, I, I, I think there's another thing as well. I think there's almost the there's been this sort of drive that oh, it takes too long. It takes too long to to, to do make a VIR. That one felt it. It was almost done with that sort of in mind. It was like, oh, don't don't take too like, look, that's fine, it's all good. When maybe the, there should be a thing of like, yeah, it, it's it's a standard sort of time of even if it's an obvious sort of decision, it's gonna we're gonna take a, a thirty seconds or whatever. Where it's just like, right, we're gonna get all our you know let it, let everyone breathe, let, let everyone sort of settle down and say to the referee, yeah, that's a red card, that that's an offside, that's a goal, and yeah, <laughs> whatever happened on on Saturday just. 
was just weird playing weird. I, I, I'm going to bring up a tweet here, if you don't mind, from um, if I can find it from Ollie Cave because a lot's been made, and I, I know um, Paul Joyce wrote, wrote about it about the officials going to the UAE and then yeah. again that, that's, it's lend itself to conspiracy theories but worst case is there's a question to be asked is, is flying to the UAE yeah. or Saudi Arabia on a Thursday before you referee a Premier League game or even VAR on a, on a Saturday so that's been brought up I'll bring Ollie Kay's tweet here says I'm not questioning the integrity of anyone involved but it's crazy for Webb and the PGMOL to allow officials to freelance in the UAE or Kingdom of Saudi Arabia whilst also working in the Premier League again it, it not only does it raise Questions of perceptions. Not, not, yeah. not even. It's just like um, same thing. It's just conflict of interest. These questions all get brought up. But worst case is, why are you flying there for on a Thursday when you got a game yeah. on a Saturday? Like it, it's like Liverpool play a Thursday in the Europa League. They're not playing games on Saturday. No, yeah, you're so right. So there, there, there is some, especially. It, it I mean, does, that doesn't uh, come down to the referees in, in question, really. That comes no, down no. to the, the Howard Webb yeah, and, yeah. and the and the people who appoint them, of course. I mean, that maybe that's something that comes out of it. Listen, you know, your calendar needs to be. Better spreads, you know, you can't be, you can't be doing. I mean, they were meant to do. Uh, Darren England was meant to do a game on the Sunday as well. Uh, Forest Brentford was. I don't he? think the guy who replaced him did any better, by the way. Yeah, that, well, that yeah. penalty decision, Jesus yeah. Christ, the goalkeeper assaulted someone, and yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly. Mad. Yeah, well, Dan, I mean, Dan Cook was meant to work Monday um, at the Fulham Chelsea game, yeah. so they were meant to be doing two games in a weekend when they've been. They've done a midweek game, even even that alone. And I, I know, look, at your VAR, you're sitting in a room and you're, you're doing this, but listen. What it, what it lends itself to, you no one can say for sure that happened because of that. No. But what you can say for sure is that when something like that happens, then that's going to get looked at. Yeah, yeah. That's going to get looked at. You're going to you're going to people are going to ask questions. Say, well, hang on, what were you doing? You know, what why would you know why would you make such a a, a basic, uh, a, you know, a, a, an unavo- a, sorry, an avoidable error. Um, and yeah, maybe that's another thing that comes out of it, um, you know, that you can't do. I'm pretty sure that pretty sure that won't become the case because because money. But at the very least, that if you're refereeing on a Thursday night, I'm, I, you know, I'd be surprised. Was Anthony Taylor and Michael Oliver do the do the um, European games? I'd be surprised if they'd done a Europa League game on a Thursday night, if they were on a Premier League game on a Saturday. That shouldn't. It just doesn't feel like that should be the case, personally. Hello everyone, hope you enjoyed that clip from the Journal Insight Show. If you want to check out the entire show where we went even more in-depth on the absolute farce that is the VAR Liverpool Tottenham, including Curtis Jones' red card and of course an injury update on Cody Gakpo, redmenplus.com is the place to go. That show is available right now in full in video or in podcast form, so yeah, go and check it out. Thank you so very, very much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like. Uh, the season is now well underway. If you need extra Red Men content, be it podcasts, videos, documentaries, interviews, and general shows, fill your boots on redmenplus.com today. <laughs>